this is W. Eric Martin with Big Game Geek News. I'm here under my dining room table trying to hide from my life from the dice in Seasons. A new game by Rizos Honesty. Those dice are killers, I tell you. I'll have to get out of here to show you the game, though. Let's go. Oh, Jesus! Oh. Your goal in Seasons is to have the most points at the end of the game. These aren't just mere points, though. These are crystals. So what season's all about anyway? We know it's about scoring points, but really that's not the focus. I mean, points are good and points are of course what you want to win the game, but to get the points you want to do cool stuff with your cards and you want to have good times with the dice. The power card deck in Season is comprised of 50 different cards with two copies of each card with magic items in purple and familiars in orange. Each card has its own power, each card has a cost, which is shown on the card. Each card also has a special power, which is shown on the bottom. You're gonna start the game with nine cards. Now you can start one of two ways. You can start with a predetermined set of cards as covered in the rules. They tell you which numbers to use. You put them in blocks. Each player takes a block. You got a set of cards that'll work together and give you some kind of special juice going on if you know how to use them well, which you won't in your first game, so good luck. Uh, the other way to do this is to take nine cards at random from the deck. You're gonna pick one card of your choice Keep it, pass the other eight to the guy to your left, the guy to your right is gonna pass you eight, you choose one of those, and so on. You pass the cards, cards come back to you, and eventually you're gonna end up with nine cards. Now, you don't get all nine cards in your hand. You're gonna pick three of them, you're gonna put them aside, you're gonna cover them with number three token. You get those cards at the start of the third year. You take three more cards, put them aside, and you're gonna start those with the number two token on top. Then you can have three more cards and that's all you start with at the beginning of the game. Now in addition to drafting cards, their deck is divided up into two groups. There's number card numbers one to 30, which have a little more straightforward powers, a little less damaging, a little less menacing. And then there's cards 31 to 50. Now again, there are two copies of each card. In the first draft, the rules suggest that you draft only from the beginning cards, the one to 30, the slightly easier ones, ones that will combo more, ones that will be a little easier to grip altogether. But, now you could of course just go with everything, and of course lots of gamers will be like, oh man, I'm going to go with everything, this is really good, I can do anything, I am awesome, I'm super awesome. Go for it if you want to go for it. You can, you can, it might work out for you, it might, might, might possibly work for you, possibly, and if so, cool. You'll get to see those challenges right away. Uh, for other people, it's fine to build up to it. There's lots of stuff going on in just the 1 to 30. You put that together, and you see what comes out of that. Some cards give you a straight-up bonus. Play Amulet of Earth, you get 9 crystals immediately. Bam! Staff of Spring, on the other hand, gives you 3 crystals every time you summon a power card. Some cards have an activated ability. This lets you discard 4 identical energy tokens to get to 12 crystals. Some cards are more straightforward than others. The Runic Cube of Yolus costs 20 crystals, gives you 30 crystals at the end of the game. Seems kind of lame. Why bother? If you play your cards right, or get the right cards, or find the right cards, somehow take the right cards, you can get power cards out for free. And this card lets you discard all your energy tokens to get a card out for free. This one lets you draw four, summon one for free. Each power card that you summon is worth 0 to 30 points at the end of the game, and this comprises a huge portion of your score. So, build wisely. Each card in Seasons has a symbol in the lower left-hand corner, and that symbol indicates when the power in the card takes effect. If the card has an arrow, that power takes place when the card comes down into play. If it has a circle, then that power takes place continuously, like a circle, going around and around. If the card has a gear, then that card has an activated ability that can be used once per turn. Alright, time to say a little bit more about these killer dice. Seasons last for three years, as shown on the board in the center of the playing area, with year one going first, obviously, and number one in the first year. This year is divided up into months, proportionally, with four seasons. Each season is color-coded on the board. Each season also has a number of... Uh, icons in, in the chart here to show you what elements are most available during each season. So blue and red in the first, yellow is medium okay, green you'll never see on the dice that you roll for that season. Each player has an individual player board which shows the summoning gauge. The summoning gauge starts at zero, that tells you how many cards you can have in play. So first 
can't have a thing. But for each star that you collect and based on certain power cards you take and possibly special bonus actions down here, your summoning power will increase and you'll be able to have more cards in play. Each player board also shows four bonus actions that are available to players. Players can take them at any time, but each special action costs points. The first one costs five points, next one costs seven, next one costs eight off your score at the end of the game. On the turn, if you are the star player, you take some dice for the current season, roll those dice, and put one in your marker and pass the rest along. If you are later in the turn order, you are going to get past a certain number of dice. You keep one of those dice, put them in your board, if there's only one dice left, you are the last player for that round. This die goes back by the season board. Whatever die is left over, that number of pips on that die shows you how many spaces this will advance, which will determine what season you'll be in for the next round. At the end of the next round, the next player will be, uh, next player in clockwise order will be the first player to roll the dice. The face on a die shows what you get for that round. The star, you increase your summoning power by one. The little water droplets there, you add two blue tokens to your reserve. This die increases your summoning gauge, gives you two green. And then play one of my cards. Why can I play a card? Because I have at least a one summoning power and I have no cards in front of me. I spin my three green tokens, I put out the Staff of Spring. There you go. Anytime I play a summon card in the, uh, summon a power card in the future, I'll get three crystals. On a future turn, perhaps I get a star and a blue marker. Take the blue energy token, increase my summoning power, and now I have room for two cards, bam. In comes the Amulet of Air, costing two red tokens, increasing my summoning power by two. If I had more cards, it only cost the blue or the cost crystals that I could pay. Plop them on the table too. This die gives you six points straight up. This die gives you three points and two fire tokens. On a player board, there are room for seven energy tokens, and that's the maximum that you can have. You must take your energy tokens and crystals at the start of your turn before you do anything else. So. If you are already jam-packed with tokens and you get some more, you're gonna have to throw some away, which is very wasteful. Mama don't like to be wasteful. This die gives you a card, and those are good to have because you usually need a bit more than the nine you start with. This die gives you a water token and a feather. And in addition, it's got a transmute symbol, which means you can transmute any energy tokens you have into crystals. When you transmute, you look at what season you're in and you look at the value of the specific energy tokens on the season board. Blue and red are the most common during the blue season and they are worth only one crystal. Yellow is uncommon, it shows up sometimes on the dice. That is worth two crystals. The green you'll never see on the dice, but maybe you get some from cards, maybe held over from previous seasons, and those are worth three crystals. Now, as the seasons change, each token is gonna to be worth some different point of value. So of course you have to plan accordingly. As the turns progress, this marker will move throughout the seasons, which changes the dice that you roll, which changes which elements are going to be common, uncommon, or impossible to find by die roll in a particular turn. As you go around the board, you pass season by season, you advance on the year. After three times around the board, the game ends. Given all the cards that are already in this game, it's easy to imagine more. It's easy to imagine expansion possibilities with new cards that get mixed in in various ways. New dice possibly have combinations, uh, special things to go with those cards, new special powers. There's all sorts of possibilities for where things can go from here. Now, while season goes from two to four players, a number of people, uh, including Bruno Cathala, who you might have heard of, does game designer of his own, pretty well known, has recommended this game is really for two. You want two players, and that'll be the best. Now, of course, I don't know, maybe Bruno Cathala is talking through his uh, uh, nostril, and uh, perhaps the game works fine. The game I played works fine with four. I played twice at four. It's worked out pretty well. There's occasionally a lot of stuff going on with this person getting a point at the end of this season and this guy getting a point at the end of the round and someone else getting a free energy token and someone else get to punch you in the face and all sorts of little special effects that are going on and maybe you don't like that maybe it's a bit much for you well then two players two players it is uh for everyone else though you can just stick forth the table and see how it works out for you that's it for the wrap up on the seasons hope that i treat you well don't give me any brain damage and I'll see you at the gaming table.